Is the mask muffling my voice? Ever since Ryan Reynolds said that he could easily make an R-rated version of Detective Pikachu, we've been curious about what goes on behind the scenes on his film sets. He makes us laugh as the Merc with the mouth, but let's see what he does to amuse his co-workers in ways that don't make it onto the big screen. We'll also reveal the surefire method this star has for making his co-star Dwayne Johnson crack a smile. What's your, what's your blood type? Let's be positive, just, just like my life outlook. <laughs> Everyone knows that there are a few things in the entire world that are cooler than walking away from an explosion without looking back at it, and bonus points if you slip on a pair of sunglasses too. But Ryan Reynolds decided to see if he could up the ante on the set of Deadpool 2 by holding a casual conversation with one of his co-stars despite the chaos around him. There is a ton of action in this movie, and in most scenes, his character Deadpool is right in the thick of it. He doesn't get rattled by much, and apparently Reynolds and Josh Brolin are even more chill behind the scenes. Reynolds took to Instagram to show off this footage of himself and Brolin having a totally casual chat between co-workers. While Dopinder's taxi crashes through the set between them, even though we can assume this was part of the script and not a terrible accident, it's pretty crazy that Reynolds and Brolin don't even flinch. Reynolds even captioned the clip, in fairness, Waze always finds the shortest route to work. Most of us tend to think of Dwayne The Rock Johnson as a lovable guy, but he famously didn't get along with his co-stars in the Fast and Furious franchise. Apparently he was too furious, huh? So he got kicked over to his own movie, Hobbs and Shaw. But luckily for Johnson and Fast and Furious fans, he got along much better with fellow cast member Ryan Reynolds. You look like a young Shirley Temple. We know this franchise has a lot of fiery crashes, and speaking of those, Reynolds couldn't resist adding some Game of Thrones final season spoilers in the movie. Can you believe that Game of Thrones ending? I didn't see it. You dirty little liar. What's the problem? You said there was a problem. Apparently, those weren't part of the script. They were just improvised from the beautiful brain of Ryan Reynolds. When Hobbs and Shaw director David Leach asked Reynolds to talk about the virus as his character Locke, he decided to pepper in some comments about the conclusion of Game of Thrones. In addition to poking fun at the former cultural phenomena that was Game of Thrones, Dwayne Johnson and Ryan Reynolds also joked via Twitter about Reynolds refusing to drive his car in the movie because he's just not a fan of the stripes. As we're all increasingly connected on social media, it's harder and harder to prevent spoilers from hitting the web during filming. Oh no, finish your tweet. It's not, that's fine, just give us a second. Disney is more of a wild card with notoriously loose lip stars like uh, Mark Ruffalo and Tom Holland in their fictional cinematic universe, but things were really serious on the set of Deadpool 2. Stars were given lines and notes on red paper to ensure nobody could make a quick photocopy between takes, and each scrap of paper had to be turned into the script coordinator at the end of the day to be shredded. So what was the big secret? Well, one was that the X-Force would be a part of the movie, and even the X-Force members weren't allowed to talk about it. According to actors Louis Tan and Bill Skarsgård, they couldn't even reveal the truth about their roles to their families. Another super secret casting choice was Ryan Reynolds. We know, he was Wade Wilson, but he also played the role of the Juggernaut. Apparently, Colossus actor Stefan Kapisik had no clue until he saw Reynolds slipping on the CGI Juggernaut costume. This time, Reynolds didn't have to make jokes to make his co-stars crack up, he just had to be himself and hit them with this massive surprise. I'm gonna rip you in half now. That is such a juggernaut thing to say. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to work with your friends, but according to actress Marina Baccarin, things got downright awkward between her and Ryan Reynolds on the set of the first Deadpool movie. Vanessa and Wade didn't quite have a cute meet, but the chemistry between them was undeniable. Or at least that's how it looked to those of us in the audience. On set, totally different story. Those uh, quick clips of Wade and Vanessa doing the uh, bedroom boogaloo took two solid days to film. Apparently there are a lot of holidays and not all the clips that came up made it into the final film. Believe me, there's a lot left on the cutting room floor because there's a lot of holidays. And I feel good about that, the part that was left out. Even worse though, was having to pucker up after Wade's cancer diagnosis when he was wearing his facial prosthetics. The scent of rubber just didn't help this actress get in the mood, even though Reynolds did his best to keep her laughing. Like a young Kirk Cameron. As a thank you to her Deadpool co-star, she made sure to wish him a happy International Women's Day on Instagram. When you think about the behind the scenes outtakes you'd most want to see, Detective Pikachu probably isn't first on your list, but maybe it should be. According to Ryan Reynolds, there was a lot of improvisation going on when he was recording the role in order to give the studio plenty of options to pick from. He claims his jokes ran the gamut from family friendly PG to an all out R rating. Apparently, there's enough extra dialogue to make a completely R rated version of Detective 
Pikachu using Reynolds' recordings. And knowing that the fine, upstanding Pokemon company will never let that footage see the light of day is honestly pretty heartbreaking. But we did get a PG-13 version of Deadpool 2, so maybe there's hope? At least we did get to see Reynolds' own version of a behind-the-scenes look at Detective Pikachu. He joked about spending an entire year getting into character for the part, dropping to 182 pounds and a few feet of his height. Although he admitted to taking the role so he could be in a movie his kids could watch, Reynolds joked that he had to forget all about his kids when he vanished into the part of Pikachu. He doesn't have a wife. No. He's a little yellow guy. The movie X-Men Origins Wolverine was pretty much the worst thing to ever happen to Deadpool, and the guy's been through a lot. But the silver lining of this flick is the beautiful friendship between Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman, and their absolutely ceaseless prank war. According to Jackman, his co-star had just married actress Scarlett Johansson, who happens to be a good friend of his. He teased Reynolds that he better treat her right while they were working on Wolverine, and according to him, that's how this friendly feud got started. These two pals have apparently had a ton of fun on set, but some of their pranks have played it out in very public ways. Like when Hugh Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal invited Reynolds to their Christmas party and told him everyone would be wearing a festive sweater. But don't worry, because Reynolds got his revenge by inviting Jackman to wear matching sweaters and conveniently forgetting to put his on. Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman have a classic friendship full of teasing, light-hearted pranks, and some genuine support now and then. It got to a point where I said, mate, I think I should just leave the set because he ad-libs quite a lot and he is hilarious. But Jackman better watch out, because Reynolds seems to be making a new movie-making BFF, Dwayne Johnson. Not only did these two collaborate on Hobbs and Shaw, but they also had the opportunity to work together on the set of the Netflix film Red Notice. Reynolds says working on the movie has been a blast, and describes it as a hybrid of Fortnite and GTA. But if that sounds awesome to you, the bad news is that you're gonna have to wait to see it now since production's been put on hold. According to Reynolds, it probably could have been finished by now if he had stopped goofing around behind the scenes. Apparently, Reynolds discovered a secret message to make his co-star laugh, and he wasn't able to resist doing it on set. Reynolds would simply repeat Johnson's lines back to him, sped up about 27% faster with uh, some colorful language thrown in for good measure. Sometimes, Johnson would laugh so hard he'd have to walk away and, uh, yeah, it sounds like that's why we're gonna be waiting a while for Red Notice. If you can't get enough of this Deadpool star, then you might want to check out his film The Voices. Not only does he star in it as the main character, but he also voices his cat and dog. Jerry, you're a serial killer. Eric Weinbacker. No, he isn't. The end result is pretty great, but apparently filming got a little bit awkward and a little bit dangerous. After saying his own human dialogue, Ryan would say the animal's lines silently to himself. His voice was added in later, of course, but it made his time on set really weird. According to director Marjan Satrapi, Reynolds also had an issue with one of his four-legged co-stars. Working with Wolverine is one thing, but having to handle a feisty feline is something else entirely. Reynolds was nervous when he had to interact with Mr. Whiskers, and Satrapi says most of the time you see them together in the movie, they aren't actually in the same room. And when Reynolds had to hold Mr. Whiskers, he might have picked him up a little too forcefully, causing the cat to express his dis pleasure in the form of severe scratches. We all like to laugh at what a funny, charming guy Ryan Reynolds is, and we all supported him on his journey to portray comic book character Deadpool. But did he really promote the franchise for the right reasons, or was this all just part of the long con? When he was working on the first Deadpool movie, Reynolds constantly asked about taking the suit home with him to keep. Even though it's supposedly uncomfortable and really annoying when you have to use the bathroom, he still wanted it. After being told repeatedly, Reynolds gave up and, uh, wait, no, yo, he just took it home with him anyway. Is it stealing? if you tell them you're stealing it? I don't know. And then it's just taking it. After waiting 11 long years to play Deadpool the right way, he simply walked out with it. When the costumer asked him to take it off, Reynolds invited him to take it from him and just left. Hey, after having to suffer through X-Men Origins Wolverine and Green Lantern, it's the least he's owed at this point. Deadpool is great with a blade or two, but according to Ryan Reynolds, it's not the easiest skill to pick up. When working on X-Men Origins Wolverine, he was spending long days on set and spinning swords quickly and precariously close to his body. Apparently, it's a good thing he was wearing thick pants because he had a couple of way too close calls. But he clearly felt confident after conquering the role of Deadpool, so much so that he decided to match up his skills with those of Olivia Munn, who plays the mutant Psylocke in X-Men Apocalypse. As much as we hate to say it, Reynolds' skills didn't make for a very impressive display compared to hers. Give me your best shot, one-eyed Willy. Which Reynolds movie do you think would have been the most fun to be on set for? 
And don't you dare say Green Lantern. Even if that's your favorite movie, we'd still love to stay connected. So make sure you click subscribe to get more videos from us here at Screen Rant. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.